Hello, and welcome to How Did They Do That? The show where we pick out a small detail, effect, or interesting moment from a game and break down how the game's developer achieved it. Today, we will be taking a look at the facial animation in Jack and Daxter. 3D facial animation has been a big part of games ever since we've had the ability to render a character on the screen. Much like in real life, we use game characters' faces to show emotion, and to allow our characters to express themselves both with and without speech. There are several methods for animating a character's face. The most common in today's mostly realistic human-driven games is through bones. However, in order for an animator to get the most out of a character, a lot of bones are required. Similarly, mocap also requires bones in order to map the points of an actor's face. Back in the days of PS2, we still had fairly tight limitations, by today's standards. And, as such, this wasn't always the best method. Bones like this are normally limited to realistic human movement, in order to avoid any odd, uncanny valley-like moments. However, with more cartoony characters like Jack and Daxter, a slightly different method is better suited. This approach is called Morph Shapes. In order to effectively explain this process, I'll need to first quickly cover how a 3D model is constructed. In short, a 3D model is pieced together from triangular polygons. The points at which these polygons intersect are called vertices. On every model, each of these vertices are individually numbered, with a unique set of coordinates for each. Morph shapes, or morph targets, basically work like this. You have your base model, in this case, Wrench, from my game Clive and Wrench. This is his standard base pose. You create a copy of this model, and then proceed to move the polygons and vertices around to form either an expression or phony. It's important to note that you may only move the existing points. You cannot remove or add anything. This means that the character's model must be created with this in mind. Once you have a face pose that you are happy with, you can apply a morph modifier to the original and target the new pose we've just made. This then allows you to morph between the two. What the computer is doing is moving each vertex from its original coordinate to its new position when you set the morph target. 3D animation in games, like movies, use a method called keyframing. This means you don't need to pose every single frame like you would with stop motion. Instead, you can set a character's pose and then change this pose a certain amount of frames later. The computer will then calculate a smooth blend between each one. This works for bones, but also for the morph modifier. Here you can see I've set Wrench's head to neutral at frame 0, then set him to look surprised at frame 20. When I play it back, it looks like this. Each character will end up with tens if not hundreds or even thousands of different morph target poses that can be mixed and matched to suit every need. Here you can see Daxter's many targets. The animators who worked on the game would be able to morph between any of these poses at any time, allowing him to pull off his trademark extreme facial animations. That looks like it hurt. Should I call for backup? When synced up to voice acting, this could create a believable, talking, emotive character. Don't step into the light, Jack! Don't step into the light! And that about wraps it up for today. Is there an effect or detail you've seen in a game that's had you wondering? How did they do that? If so, be sure to leave it in the comments below and we may just cover it. Thanks for watching. Ta ra! Well, uh, better you than me.